Okay, good morning. I worked on this last night. This boom box is almost 99% completed. Let's go over some of the things that I did. I installed the spectrum analyzer. It of course reacts to the volume of the sound. And I installed the knobs. The knobs are just a dollar or so for the cheap knobs. So this is a cheap speaker, so you gotta buy cheap knobs. So what I had to do, I had to cut out a hole here. And um, you see it shows actually the LED of the amplifiers. So that's good. And it also adds a little bit of ventilation. And the hole is not that obvious because I lined the inside with uh, the same material so it has more of a finished look so I guess that's, those are the details same thing for the hole here I lined the inside with the vinyl also so this is how it looks like from the outside I'm just playing something on YouTube called Morning Mood. And last night I was working to uh, install this here. This is a charger, constant charger. And when you attach this to the AC, it can charge my battery. So it worked kind of okay. But the problem uh, arises when I switch this to DC. So the DC starts charging itself, sort of like in a loop or something like that. So that, that created a problem and um, I took it out because I don't want to sometimes inadvertently turn it to DC and cause a problem. So. The voltmeter, I will put it back so I can know the state of charge of my battery, but I'm not going to use this charger because sometimes this kind of board can be slightly off and uh, when I'm charging the lithium ion battery, uh, I want it to be a bit more precise. So I'm using a storeboard charger for that purpose. So. This is the store board charger that I got. It's set for 12.6 volts, so it won't go higher than that. And I just plug it in to this uh, socket here and, and it will charge. Um, I don't think I'm gonna bother drilling another hole just to charge the battery. For the most part, I won't be using the battery. And for the times that I have to charge it, I just open the cover and uh, plug it in and charge. This will last at least, at least 10 hours. And if it is on low volume, it will last much, much longer. And I bought another pack of these laptop cells and I bought some extra cases so I can always build more batteries and there are plenty of room inside here so I can put extra stuff in here right and this stuff can be easily accessed I just open up the top cover and um, I can access all the stuff so some of the parts in here I went over already in my earlier videos but I guess uh, since this is more or less uh, done and maybe a recap is in order. So let's go over it again. 16 volt 3 amp laptop power supply for the amp. Uh, a higher voltage one is recommended but I don't have one. 
This is a good one. This is a Samsung. You can probably buy a cheaper one online, but they are probably not as reliable. So for now, this will do. It sounds nice. And uh, install the AC-DC switch here. Middle position is off. And um, this is the positive bus. And uh, this is from a project case I bought from Radio Shack. And it comes with like an aluminum plate. So I just uh, soldered on the connectors to the aluminum plate. And that acts as a bus bar for the positive. And this here would be the negative bus. Uh, all the negative negatives go there. Generally, it would be better to separate the grounds connection, especially if you have a noise problem. But noise generally is not a problem if you use the amp. Uh, uh, on DC using the batteries especially more of a problem when you have AC and you have the AC hum uh, etc so there is of course I mean it's, it's a cheap amp uh, you can't ex escape it it's not zero noise there's a little bit of noise but you don't hear it and when there's no signal the amp is on, is on but there's no noise at all there's no signal. The signal, I think, injects uh, the Bluetooth signal from your your music source injects the noise, for the most part. The amp noise is uh, it's not that bad. It's manageable. Okay, and of course the amp is the uh, TPA three one one six D two circuit. The chip is below, uh, beneath the heatsink here, and it can put out 50 watts RMS into your left and right channel. So each channel gets 50 watts, 80 then, watts RMS. Uh, actually, my subwoofer in here handles 80 watts RMS, but the amp is supposed to be able to put out 100 watts RMS. So that's pretty, pretty powerful. So. Uh, there are a lot of versions of the um, amplifier using the chip. This is, I guess, the cheaper version of it. And therefore, the speaker terminals are terrible. You cannot put any kind of thicker gauge wires in it. I stripped the screws trying to screw them down because uh, they, these are not really speaker terminals so they're terrible so eventually I might have to replace uh, at least the screws on them but you you get what you pay for I pay $18 so can't ask for much now the input is only Bluetooth amplifier only um, Bluetooth signal only so that in a sense that makes it simpler and make it less noise prone because you don't have a separate Bluetooth decoder and you don't need a noise isolator or ground isolator um, for that so it's all like a integrated amp and I added these spectrum analyzer which is basically just a fancy LED lights that bounce up and down with the music and it's powered by a USB power bank I have listened to music on this for days now using the same charge because the quiescent current when it is not doing anything is only using up 3 MA and when this is active it's using about 30 MA so it's, it's nothing. So this can be charged quickly and um, this will work again. And if I don't want this to work, I just unplug this. Right? So it can be tiring if you look at it for a long time. 
so I put sort of like a filter film on it so it looks uh, less glaring and then of course the whole thing is wrapped in vinyl right this is just cheap vinyl I guess a little bit better than the contact paper uh, for the shelving but this is my first attempt at doing it and the plywood if you don't cover it or put veneer on it would be extra ugly so it would be better for you to cover it I was looking at videos on covering it with Torlax sort of like a fake leather that would be an option that would certainly be more durable and that would be something that I can do in the future if I need to do that I'll just peel off the, the vinyl and, and, and cover it with something else right and you can even cover it with like these carpeting here on the subwoofers that they use for cars so that would be another option the only la final things that I have to do is uh, put maybe like a handle on here on each side so I can put a strap and to lug it around so those are the things that I have to do but in the main it uh, it is finished now this compartment was pretty empty in the beginning but as you wire things up because you you don't want to manually plug things in and out you want switches you want uh, power supplies you want uh, the analyzer then the wiring gets a little crazy but they are all accessible and the uh, case is kind of ventilated and the heat generated by the amp is minimal because this is a class D amplifier meaning it's very efficient it's not like the old class A or B amplifiers where they have like huge heat sinks and you have, you have to have a fan in there I have a, a receiver that has a fan in there and in the winter I sit next to it because it blows out warm air so they're that hot so I don't have to turn up the heat so but with these they are so efficient that it runs on very little power normal listen listening it draws about three watts so you don't really need a lot of power you need a lot of power when you want to rattle windows and you install this kind of subwoofer but that would be very tiring and that wouldn't really be listening to music for normal listening 5 watts that's the tops and uh, this can put out 100 watts for the subwoofer but you only need very little power like a 3 amp 16 volts would, would do it and you can even use uh, AA batteries you can use the lithium ion pack you can use yeah I, I demonstrated using the solar panel a small solar panel it, it can run it so that's it that's the do-it-yourself amplifier 8 inch subwoofer 5 inch car speakers passive radiator in the back I chose a passive radiator because with uh, reflex base reflex port you would have there's more calculation it's more difficult to tune and the box has to be much bigger to get the same base notes so I put a passive radiator in there it's not cheap it's like $30 it's a 10 inch Dayton passive radiator so yeah looking pretty good yeah 
Let's see here. So that that's my morning. Oh, the, these cheap nuffs, they are terrible. I can hardly read them. You see here, I have to put something on there to indicate the volume. You can go out and make one for yourself or for less than $150. Thanks for watching.